A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, Christ, when we were still helpless, yet died at the point in time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, how much more once reconciled will, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received the consolation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First of all, 
we can reflect on Jesus' compassion. It is stated in the Gospel that Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them. This is all about compassion. And Jesus' compassion here is expressed by his words, by his deeds. By the proclamation of the gospel and touching the sick people. Touching the people who are in need. Feeding the hunger, expulsion of demons, and so on. Jesus here makes the kingdom of God that he himself proclaimed become real for the people. This is the way that we, that the church, must proclaim the kingdom of God every now and then. Proclamation itself is good. Proclamation needs to be improved. <clears throat> Proclamation needs to be adjusted all the time, generation to generation. But proclamation itself doesn't stop there. Because proclamation in that way is not enough. Proclamation of the gospel as Jesus has shown must be accompanied by the deed, by the action of compassion. As I said, by touching and alleviating the mysteries of the people, the people who are in need, lifting up the people from difficulties in their lives. This is if we are talking about Jesus' compassion. Showing his being compassionate, Jesus is not doing this alone. He called he call collaborators, and collaborators are needed here all the time. We are reminded here, my brothers and sisters, that we ourselves as church do not stop asking for more collaborators to join the mission of Jesus through our prayer for vocation. We are reminded the importance of vocation in our church, the importance of having more collaborators in understanding Jesus' compassion and in sharing this with the people who are in need. Let us keep praying for God's calling in this very aspect because like what I said that Jesus is not doing this alone. It doesn't mean that Jesus is not capable of doing this to Lord, but He wants to inform us as many as people who want to join Him in sharing His compassion, in sharing His mercy, in sharing His love in the mission. And the next one, which is the last part of the main sentence that 
I said I mentioned during the introduction, Jesus summoned and even to ascend his disciples. This is very momentous event, my dear brothers and sisters, in the history of salvation. In the history of the formation of God's people, that God himself willingly involved the people, involved his disciples, to touch, to reach the people wherever they are. And we can understand, we can know here the uniqueness of the way how God involved the people involve the disciples. Each is personally chosen. Each is personally called by name. As it is described in the passage of the Gospel, we have to remember these very names mentioned in the Gospel. Each of them are called by name. They are also called by me. And it doesn't stop there. We are called by me to live and to be part of the community. As the disciples <clears throat> becoming part of the community. No one of us here, if we want to be followers of Jesus, if we want to have Jesus in sharing his love, in sharing his compassion, in his mission, no one of us is called to be a single fighter outside of the community. We are not called to be Lord of all in the church. We are called by name, personally by God, to live in the community, to be part of the community. And even to a way which is part of our life in the nation to be sent up back to the people. Let us Brothers and sisters, comprehend this and reflect on this very matter, this very pattern that would go on generation to generation. Let us pray that more people are open for God's compassion, for God's call, for God's mission, whatever the role that the people that we might contribute in the church. May the good Lord bless all of us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord bless us with our strength, our grace, and our understanding, for our living with the Lord's holy Church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may your spirit be with of your heart. We lift him up to the Lord. With us we thanks to the Lord of God. In his pride and just. In this true light and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that he sounds, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By passion of the cross he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the name of your God, as without a heavy acclaim. Blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, who said to your bosses, this I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us all reach out in the sign of peace.
let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O oh Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may you bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Master said, Go in peace. Thanks be to God.